Except, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangle and from fornication. Then Paul took the men and the next day purifying himself with them. Don't you know what kind of purification that is, Paul? What are you using to purify anything we can have to the blood of Jesus? What can wash away my sin? What can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Which purifying is this? For we believe that both they and us will be purified by faith in Christ. It says, we find himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of the purification until that an offering, uh -uh, an offering, an offering. What kind of offering? Jesus is the final offering. Jesus also that he might sanctify the people, purify the people. He offered himself as a lamb without spot. Let us go out to him without the can. Bearing his reproach. That's how we get purified and sanctified. But here it says that until that an offering shall be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, they stood up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law. They knew what he was teaching. You can't fool the people. When the people saw him in the temple, oh, they said, this one, this one is just makeup. This one is cosmetic. This one is superficial. We know Paul the Apostle is going to get out of this place and say the same thing. You cannot cower this man. You cannot conquer this man. This man is of a strong conviction. Come and help us. Take this man out of this place. He is the person that has taught every man everywhere. And they are taught against the law and against this place. And furthermore now, he brought the Greeks also into the temple. And he has polluted this holy place. Well, did they repent? I said, did they repent? Those Jews that saw him. So the Jews have become like a Jew that, you know, I might save some. Was anybody saved here? Tell me out loud. No. See, when we read the scriptures, we, you know, just were faithful to the scriptures. Abraham was a great, great man of God, a friend of God. You know, he told a lie. We don't excuse that lie. David was a man after God's heart. He committed adultery. We don't excuse that adultery. And Peter was a forefront apostle. He denied the Lord. We don't, we don't excuse that. And when somebody that we respect has done something he shouldn't have done, we don't, we don't excuse that and bring that as part of the Christian life and say, he's Abraham, he's David, he's Peter, he's Paul, and because of who he is, we're going to explain away everything that he did. No, we don't do that. Actually, the Lord had told uh, Paul not to go to Jerusalem. You'll be surprised. The apostle, the apostle Paul, he was a man that he just felt, this I will do and this I can do. And then Agabus came. And Agabus took the, uh, he took the belt of the man, the girdle of the man. I said, whoever has this girdle, this is what will happen to him when he gets to Jerusalem. And you, you know the understanding and the conviction of Paul the apostle. What mean you to weep and to break my heart? I'm ready to go. Even to die in Jerusalem. But apart from that occasion, look at chapter 22 of Acts. Acts chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 17. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, this was another time, I was in a trance and saw him saying unto me, Make haste. And get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. The Lord made it clear to him. 
Paul, get out of Jerusalem and don't stay there. I've given you ministry outside Jerusalem and make us hurry up. Get thee quickly out of Jerusalem because they have made up their minds. They want to stick to the law of Moses. They will not receive the gospel here. And so, and they will not receive that testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. He was arguing with the Lord. He said, no, they will believe. Lord, how do you say they will not believe? When I tell them my testimony, and I tell them what I used to do in Jerusalem, they will accept. But the Lord said they will not accept. He knows the people, Paul. Mother, you know them. And when the blood of thy mother Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto, unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart. He was telling the Lord, Oh, they know me. They know how zealous I was for the law of Moses. And they know that when Stephen was killed, I was, hold, I was holding the clothes of the people that stoned him. And even after he had said that, he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far, hence, unto the Gentiles. I know where they will receive your ministry. I know they, where they will accept. And they will be born again. Don't bring in that, uh, you know, unto the Jew, I'm a Jew, unto, unto the I'm a Gentile. And when I look like them, and talk like them, and sacrifice like them, and offer like them, and I do this like them, they will accept. Don't say that now, Paul. Get out of that place and depart. I'm sending you far away unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word. And then lifted up their voices and said, The way was such a fellow from the earth. For it is not fit that he should lay. You see that? And as they cried out, they cast up their clothes. They were ready again to do what, what they used to do. And he threw doors in the air. Then the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle. And bitch, that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know whereof he cried so against him. Look at verse 25. And as they bowed him with thoughts, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful to, uh, for you to scourge a man that is a Jew? What? Well, you quickly change. He said, I'm not one of them again. I'm not a Roman. That's where I was born. Rome. That's the capital city among the Gentile world. And those people are going to listen. I can't identify with these people. These people, they zeal us for the law and for Moses. And they don't want the gospel. And they said, now you are binding me. And you're, is it lawful for you to do this to a Roman and uncondemned? And when the centurion heard that, he went and he told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what that does to this man, for this man is a Jew, a Roman. And then uh, the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, are thou a Roman? And he said, Yes, I am. And the chief captain answered with a great song, I obtained this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. And then straightway, they departed from him uh, that they should have examined uh, that should have examined him and it that you have been blessed with this powerful message our bottom our address is at the bottom of the uh, of the screen i believe you will join us one of this sunday to worship together thank you god bless you let us pray our mighty father we glorify your name and thank you lord because of this powerful message I pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, you will touch those people who are in need of salvation, those people who are in need of prosperity, those people who are in need of healing. And the power, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, they will give testimony because of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Say one more time, say, oh, oh, Lord.